So I am making sushi rice and I thought I would take you along on my adventures. So you will need three cups of sushi rice. I'm using this Nishiki brand. It's short grain rice. I'll say right there, sushi. And this is a two pound bag. So I also need a measuring cup and that's half a cup. So I'll just need six of those. You also need sugar, rice vinegar, a bowl to rinse the rice in thoroughly three to five times until the water runs clear. A sushi bowl cooling cooling bowl and there's a name for that and it totally eludes me at the moment. And a pot to cook your rice in. Uh, you can use a rice cooker. I decided to go with a regular pot with a tight fitting lid. And I like to use clear lids so I can see how much liquid is evaporating. You also need some salt. And a fan. You can use a hand fan, but I thought I would use this little fan that I could aim at the bowl for the rice to cool. So for this recipe, I am using three cups or 750 ml sushi rice, three and a third cup water or 830 ml, half a cup of rice vinegar or let's see, 120 ml, quarter cup of sugar, 60 ml, half a teaspoon of salt, um, dashi is optional. I don't have dashi on hand, so I'm not going to put that in. I have my saucepan uh, with a lid. I have my wooden spoon right there. Um, I have a flat bottom bowl, preferably wooden, for the cooling of the rice, which is what I got on Amazon. And I'll include links to anything that I purchased online in the description below. Uh, a fan and glass bowl, but I'm using plastic and that's for the rinsing. So first step is to rinse the rice thoroughly, which is what I'm going to show you next. There's three cups of rice. I'm going to take it to the sink and I'm going to add water and then swish around and rinse it. Drain the water out, swish around, rinse it, do the same thing. Three to five times depending on how long it takes to have the water run clear. So there's the first fill. See the water is murky. So I'm just going to swish the rice around and then drain it off and do it all over again till the water is clear instead of this milky color. As you can see the water is getting less murky. So this is rinse number four. So I'm going to do at least another one. Oh, the water's cold. I probably should have used a little warm water. My fingers are getting frozen. So it clears up with each rinse and you want to make sure that the water is relatively clear and then rinse it complete, uh, drain it completely before adding it to the pot with three and a quarter cups of water. So this is officially rinse number six and the water is clear. I'm going to strain it out in a strainer and then add it to my pot with three and a quarter cups of water and let it uh, sit for 30 minutes. No heat turned on it, just let it soak. So the rice is in three and one quarter cups of cold water. It's just going to sit and bloom off the heat. And I will make the sauce, which is rice vinegar, sugar, and salt. I don't have dashi, so that's being left out out of this recipe, but if you have it, added. I'll include a link in the description to the authentic recipe that I've been using or that I am using so you can follow along for measurements. In the saucepan I have half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter cup of sugar and half cup of rice uh, vinegar and do not let it boil but make sure that all this stuff dissolves, the sugar and the salt dissolves. So. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to set it aside to cool and while it cools my rice that's resting in water will be ready to be turned on. So when you turn on the heat, um, the I think the timing is 10, 10 minutes once it starts to simmer, turn uh, once it boils, turn it down to simmer and then 15 minutes. Be tempted not to lift the lid. Another reason why I like using clear lids so you can see kind of what's going on. And then one, uh, 15 minutes of cooking is over, you turn off the heat and let it sit for 15 minutes. 
and then transfer it to your wooden bowl, turn your fan onto it, and then sprinkle this cooled uh, rice sugar salt mixture. And that is what I'm going to get my tripod for so you can see the whole process from start to finish. It's kind of fun. Um, you could have your kids help you do it, have them fan with a, you know, old fashioned fan, rather than I'm gonna use a, you know, plug-in. Um, and I used up almost two pounds of rice, just so you know. So, um, which means we have more than enough for tonight's meal. Um, so I can make vegetable sushi for tomorrow's Meatless Monday. So probably carrots, uh, cucumbers, um, I don't have any daikon. I can use tamago, the um, egg omelet. So we'll see, I'll come up with something. See, it's heating up. I'm just gonna swirl it, but I'm gonna do that off camera because um, this pot makes a little bit of noise and I don't, want it, I don't want the sugar to scorch on the bottom. That whole process takes less than uh, two minutes to do. So everything is dissolved. I'm gonna take it off the heat. I've turned the heat off, but I'm definitely gonna take the pan off the heat and let it cool. So now the only thing I need to do is wait for my 30 minutes to pass to turn the rice on. And then we could turn it on. So probably seems a lot more intimidating until you actually do it. And once you do it, you realized how simple it is and how for a $3.19 bag of rice, I can make sushi rice enough for multiple meals. It is best to use your sushi rice immediately. Um, once I have it transferred to this bowl and it cools, I'm gonna cover it with a moist, clean uh, towel just to make sure that um, it stays kind of warm and pliable because it will be sticky, but that's okay. So um, what I'll do next is maybe toast some of the nori sheets so we can make our own little rolls. Now, we're not making real sushi sushi because I have that salmon that needs to be cooked in the oven. It's not sashimi grade. But I am going to take the skin off and fry it to a crisp so I might make crispy salmon roll, a hand roll for myself. So I have some scallions. I don't know if I have any more cucumbers left, so I'll have to check and see what veggies I have. Um, and the oven, um, I won't turn on the oven until the rice is resting because the salmon will be done within 10 minutes. So that's how I'm going to time it. And everything smells like uh, vinegary sweet rice, really yummy. All right, I'll be back in 24 minutes to start up the rice. It's 30 minutes later, rice has rested, soaked in the water. I'm turning the heat on high. As soon as the water boils, I'm gonna turn it down to simmer and let it cook for exactly 15 minutes. I'm actually gonna set an alarm so I don't get distracted because I'm also doing laundry. So yeah, getting closer. 15 minutes later, turn it off and let it sit for 10 minutes and then it'll be ready to be cooled and the wine, uh, rice vinegar sugar salt solution added to it. I think I might want to put that in the squeeze bottle for more even distribution. Spray bottle would be ideal, but I don't think I have a spray bottle small enough for that. I wonder if anyone's ever tried to do that, use a spray bottle for the sushi rice. I might have to Google that. All right, I'll show you once it simmers, once it boils, and then I'll turn it down to a simmer without lifting the lid. The water has come up to a boil, so I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer and then start in on the salmon by first removing the skin. I'm going to use a quarter sheet pan and some parchment paper to put the salmon in between and then crimp the edges. I think inside I'm gonna make it very simple. I'm gonna take the skin off and I'm just gonna sprinkle some ponzu on it to keep consistent with the Asian theme and maybe a sprinkling of sesame seeds. Ooh, too much white. <laughs> sprinkling of sesame seeds and the skin I'm going to fry on top of the stove. So I have removed the skin. Not too shabby considering I don't have a sushi knife. I just used my longest knife. Um, there's a little bit of meat, but that's okay. I'm gonna scrape it off and make a little something something for a snack. So I'm gonna just pour a little bit of ponzu on this and sprinkle of sesame seeds and pop it in the oven. Could not be any easier. <laughs> that's it. I'm gonna crimp it and I'll show you what it looks like crimped and it's gonna go in the oven for about 10 minutes. 
See, temps up so it's ready to go in. All pinched in, going in the oven, and gives me perfect time to go swap out the laundry. I don't want to have this meat go to waste, so I'm going to scrape it off with a spoon and add ponzu and black sesame for a tiny little sashimi treat. And then I'll cut the skin into manageable pieces to fry stovetop. There's the skin. I'm going to put another pan on top to keep it from curling. There's a trick. So I'm not going to walk away. I was going to go swap out laundry, but this is going to happen pretty quickly. And then we have a California medley, which I'm going to make in the exact same pan as the salmon skin. The rice is resting. I'll check it in about 10 minutes, and then I'll start transferring it to the bowl to cool and add the uh, rice, wine, sugar, salt. Concoction. Oh yeah, and this is delicious. It's the skin that was, um, the flesh of the fish that was scraped off the skin. I added ponzu and black sesame. Um, yum, and Polly doesn't get any. Mm -hmm. All for me. So there's the crispy skin. So crispy, like, listen. Yeah, and I ate every morsel of that um, raw um, flesh with the ponzu and sesame. For those of you who have never tried sushi, try sushi in form of salmon. It's um, very mild tasting, it's not fishy, and it doesn't have an assertive flavor. It would definitely be the gateway fish. <laughs> If I would, you know, if there ever is one, short of the cooked, you know, crab or the faux crab uh, sushi. So I'm going to go swap out the laundry and come back and take care of the rice cooling because it should be steamed perfectly. It's almost 10 minutes. I'm getting ready to transfer uh, the cooked steamed rice into the wooden bowl. I have my fan jimmy rigged on top of it and in the measuring cup right there. I have the solution of the rice vinegar, sugar, and salt. So, looks like some stuff doesn't didn't burn or anything. There's some color, but that's okay. If it gets crispy, that's, there's actually a word for it, which I can't think of right now. <laughs> and I am turning off the oven because the salmon is done. So that will rest. By the time the rice is done, I'll just saute the vegetables and dinner will be ready. Okay, I've transferred all the rice. There's a tiny little bit of coloration, but that's okay. And I'm gonna pour. Just turning the bowl and trying not to squish the rice. And I'm pouring on the back of the spoon to distribute the liquid. That's all of it. Smells delicious already. Bonus for the cook. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep doing this and then get the veggies done. There's the salmon out of the oven and veggie sauteing, so dinner's almost served. I think that's gonna be it for us for today. Thank you so much for stopping by and keeping us company. Sorry, there were no tricks today, so hopefully tomorrow or Tuesday. I'm hoping for tomorrow. Don't forget to thumbs up, it's free for you and it helps me out. And hopefully, I will see you all tomorrow.
Thanks for watching, everyone. Tomorrow is first day of Passover.